Okay, might be there is some mic problem was there. No issue. Okay. Now voice is clear, Vida. Please make a quick note. Now are you able to listen me? This audio video is good. Yes, Vida. Please. Yes, but I hope now voice is clear. Yes, okay. So, exam, beta, bahut jaldi, aapka exam aane wala hai, beta. This is the 30th of July, and I hope your preparation is going in the full swing. And this is the time on this 30th of July, we are going to pass this exam. And before our name, there is dr dot is going to be happen. For the lifetime. Yes, beta. Tayar hain ab sab log. Wo stress panne ke liye, wo sari cheez karne ke liye, right? So, exam is going to be held after within several days. And please be positive. Keep faith in yourself. And whatever study you have done now, please be confident that whatever study you have done, everything remain right now inside of your brain. अभी कुछ थॉट ऐसे आएंगे बेटा कि सर हमने बहुत कुछ पढ़ा है आई हैव स्टडीड अलॉट बट सर आई एम फॉरगेटिंग एवरीथिंग मेरे को ऐसा लग रहा है सर कि मेरे को कुछ भी याद नहीं है एंड दिस इज क्वाइट नॉर्मल बेटा राइट सो टुडे आई एम हेयर विद दिस 25 फाइव मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट फिजियोलॉजी क्वेश्चन फॉर दिस अपकमिंग एफ एम जी एग्जाम ऑन जुलाई ट्वेंटी सो लेट्स स्टार्ट विद दिस सेशन सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल द नॉट फॉर ऑल ऑफ यू टू बी द बेस्ट you must be able to handle the worst right beta so this phase you must be able to handle then only you can become the best so always think this note and make a clear inside of your mind that to be the best you are going to be handle the worst and definitely you have handled very carefully and very brilliantly this past several months right beta so let's take a first question of this 25 most important physiology question right so this is the first question this is the first question what is correct about a given fluid composition of a normal individual normal individual the sodium in this the sodium is given 11 पोटेशियम 140, फोर्टी बाई कार्बोनेट ट्वेल्व पी एच एस सेवन प्रोटीन फोर्टी क्लोरिन थ्री फॉस्फेट वन जीरो सिक्स सो वॉट यू कैन थिंक्स दैट विच टाइप ऑफ फ्लूड कंपोजिशन दिस इज आई टोल्ड यू बेटा इन द फ्लूड कंपोजिशन इन द फ्लूड कंपार्टमेंट इन साइड ऑफ द बॉडी देर आर मेनली टू कंपार्टमेंट्स द वन विच इज इन साइड ऑफ द सेल दैट इज कॉल्ड एज इंट्रा सेल्युलर फ्लूड एंड द सेकेंड वन विच इज present outside of the cell called as extra cellular fluid and this extra cellular fluid again is divided into two type number one interstitial fluid and the plasma volume right so according to this question according to this question that's we know that's what is the most abundant intracellular cation cation means what is the meaning of cation cation means positive ions and what is the meaning of anion anion means negative ion and i told you beta what is the most abundant cation most abundant cation means positive ion right and anion means negative ion negative ion right beta so what is the most abundant intracellular cation that is potassium most abundant extracellular cation that is sodium most abundant intracellular anion that is phosphate and most abundant in extracellular anion that is that is chlorine right beta so now can you see this potassium is given over here how much this is 140 milli equivalent per liter right sodium is 11 and bicarbonate is 12 just by looking on this sodium and potassium you can easily identify it. what is the house of this potassium i told you many times the house of the potassium that is always inside of the cell पोटेशियम कहाँ होता है बेटा सबसे ज्यादा पोटेशियम सबसे ज्यादा होता है सेल के अंदर राइट एंड सोडियम का घर कहाँ होता है व्हाट इज द हाउस ऑफ द सोडियम दिस इज ऑलवेज आउटसाइड ऑफ द सेल राइट सो दैट इज 
when the action potential starts, this sodium comes inside of the cell and then this cell become depolarized and then after during in the repolarization in resting membrane condition, this sodium potassium ATPS pump activates and this membrane becomes the resting condition. Right, brother? So can you see this sodium is 11 and potassium is 140 just by looking this condition you can easily identify which type of fluid that is. Which type of fluid that is? Yes. Yes, Bida. Yes, all of you are right. Yes, yes, yes. Everyone you are right. Yes. pH is 7 also. Yes, pH is given as well. What is the normal pH of extracellular fluid? What is the normal pH of the blood? Anybody? What is the normal pH of the blood? Normal pH of the blood, beta. Normal pH of the blood. Yes, it's it's normal pH of the blood. This is seven point three five to seven point four five, right? And the composition which is given over here, this is telling exactly, you all are right, this is intracellular fluid. This is intracellular fluid. So can you see this, this image, go through this. Can you see this is the intracellular and this is the extracellular, right brother? In this, in intracellular, sodium is less and potassium is more. But what about the extracellular? In extracellular, sodium is more and the potassium is less. So by just giving all this composition, you can easily identify that which compartment is this and what is the composition of the ions. Right, brother? So, I hope that you all of you have got this. Yes, everybody you are right. This is 7.35 to 7.45. Everyone you are right, brother. Everyone you are right. Everyone you are right. Yes, perfectly. Bilkul theek hai, Coming to the next question. Yes. Identify the cell signaling in the given below image. So, this is the image. This is the image. Yes, which type of cell signaling this is? Which type of cell signaling this is? Yes, yes, beta, yes, yes, everyone you are, no, 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 Yashwan, this is not the autocrine, this is not the autocrine, yes, beta, everyone you are right, this is, which type of cell signaling this is, can you see, beta, in this, this is the signaling cell, this is the signaling cell, and this signal cell is giving the signal to the target cell, and this target cell is the nearby and this type of cell signaling we call that is your paracrine cell signaling. This is called as paracrine cell signaling. Right, brother? I told you there is four type of cell signaling is there. The number one, there, suppose this is the cell. I told you this. This is the cell. And inside of the cell, when this cell gives the signal to itself, so when cell is talking itself only, this is called as autocrine cell signaling. And next one is, next one is that is the signaling through the gap junction. And this gap junction is also called as this is contact dependent beta. So this is signaling through the gap junction, right? Then what about this paracrine? Paracrine when there is a signaling to the nearby of the cells and you can easily identify that this is the cell and this is the nearby cell. So this cell is giving the signal to this nearby target cell. So this type of signaling we call this paracrine cell signaling. Then another one cell signaling is there whenever there is the signaling through the blood stream. So if suppose this signal comes out, this signal comes out right brother and when this signal mix into this blood and then it goes to the target cell, then it goes to the target cell this type of signaling, what we call this, this is called as endocrine cell signaling. So four type of cell signaling we have studied in the class. Number one, that is autocrine. Number two, that is signaling through the gap junction. Number three, paracrine. And number four, that is your 
signaling <coughs> for through the blood that is called as endocrine cell signaling. Right, Bada? So, there are four type of cell signaling and this type of cell signaling that is easily you can identify the paracrine cell signaling. Okay, very important for our exam point of view. Yes. Now, the few things are there talking about this cell junctions. There are different different type of cell junctions as well. And I told you that's number one that was the anchoring junction. And in this anchoring junction, we have talked about their beta desmosome and hemidesmosome. If you remember, desmosome and the hemidesmosome. In desmosome, we also call this, this is the macula adherence. So, this is desmosome and hemidesmosome. Desmosome, we also call this macula adherence, right, beta? And this hemidesmosome. Now, next type of intercellular junctions, that is the gap junction. And this gap junction is present into the cardiac muscle and the visceral organs and everywhere, but not in the skeletal muscle. I told you that thing. Due to this gap junction, this cardiac muscle actually shows this functional syncytium. Right, brother? Remember, I have told you atria contracts together and ventricle contracts together. This is due to help of this gap junction, which is present into the cardiac muscles. Okay. Number three, that is the occluding junction or also called as tight junction. And this tight junction, they are present where they forms this blood brain barrier. They present at the level of intestinal mucosa. They are present at the level of filtration that is in the kidney, GFR, glomerular filtration, nephrons, and number four, that is the Sertoli cell. So there are a lot of places where this all these tight junctions actually presents, right? So this is right answer for this question is B paracrine. Now the next question, yes, now please answer, now please answer for these questions. Can you see this question, Vida? Can you see this image? What is the true statement of Mach numbers in imaging regarding cellular transport? What is the true statement of Mach numbers in image regarding cellular transport? So I will zoom it first of all, this is 1, this is 1. Now 2, this is 2, 3 and 4, right Bida? So just see this image and please first of all identify what are these markings, which type of cellular transport this is. Please identify this. Yes Bida. Yes. So, look at on the option. Options are number one. Number one is simple diffusion. Number two, passive diffusion, facilitated diffusion or active diffusion. Option number B, simple, facilitated, passive, active. Option number C, simple, active, facilitated, passive. Option number D, simple, passive, active and facilitated. Yes, Veda. Please answer. Please answer this question. Yes, friends. Yes, all of you are right. Everyone, you are right. Wonderful, Veda. Wonderful. All of you are right. You can see, Veda, easily. This is, can you see this first number? Can you appreciate this first number? This first number, you can see, they are coming through this lipid area. This is the lipid membrane, right, Bada? Lipid content area. So, as you can see, Bada, this is the one side and this is the another side. So, these things are coming inside of this cell like directly. Means this is the simple diffusion and this simple diffusion whenever this is coming from the high concentration to low concentration. So, this is a type of passive transport, passive transport, right? Number two, number two. Number two is, can you see this is the carrier protein? Can you appreciate, brother? This is the carrier protein. And this carrier protein is allowing to pass some of the substance through this cell membrane. So can you see these substances are present over here and they are coming through this carrier protein over the another side of this cell membrane. So this is a type of facilitated transport. I told you that in the glute, example is glute and water through the aquaporins. So this is 
द फैसिलिटेड ट्रांसपोर्ट अगर बेटा इस तरीके से अगर आपको कुछ दिखे लाइक दिस ट्यूब लाइक स्ट्रक्चर सो दिस इज एक्चुअली द कैरियर प्रोटीन राइट एंड आप जब भी देखें दिस कैरियर प्रोटीन इज प्रोवाइडिंग द सम चैनल और सम पाथ फॉर दिस हाई कंसेंट्रेशन टू लो कंसेंट्रेशन और एनी अदर साइड सो अगेन वट इज हैपनिंग बेटा विच टाइप ऑफ ट्रांसपोर्ट दिस इज दिस इज अगेन ए टाइप ऑफ पेस एफ ट्रांसपोर्ट सो नाउ दिस इज नंबर वन इज सिंपल डिफ्यूजन नंबर टू इज फैसिलिटेड डिफ्यूजन नाउ एरो इज मार्क्ड ओवर हेयर इट मीन्स दे आर आस्किंग कंबाइंडली दिस वन एंड टू दे आर विच टाइप ऑफ ट्रांसपोर्ट एक्टिव और पैसिव दिस इज योर एक्टिव और पैसिव विच वन बेटा दिस इज पैसिव ट्रांसपोर्ट सो दे ऑल आर द टाइप ऑफ विच टाइप ऑफ ट्रांसपोर्ट this is the passive transport right beta so number 1 simple diffusion number 2 facilitated diffusion number 3 is passive transport right beta they all are type of passive transport what about number 4 just by looking this atp just by looking this atp what you will answer yes beta yes everyone this is this is yes this is the active transport and this active transport either anything like secondary active primary active or any transport just by looking on this because inside of that there is this is the ecf and this is icf so what is happening whenever there is any transport is happening with the use of atp this is called as active transport yes beta active transport so now let's see number 1 that is simple diffusion number 2 facilitated diffusion number 3 yes passive diffusion and number 4 this active diffusion so right answer of this question is b this is b first is simple second is facilitated third is passive fourth is active diffusion right beta now coming to the next question question number 4 yes beta what is true statement regarding nerve fiber what is true statement regarding nerve fiber yes beta yes please answer this question question number 4 what is true statement regarding nerve fiber yes my dear friends please answer for this question what is true statement regarding nerve fiber yes start answering what is the right answer of this question what is the true statement regarding nerve fibers beta no this a many of you are saying this is a a to b is absolute refractive period beta where is a to b yes many of you are saying a many of you are saying b yes beta some of you are saying yes this is d yes beta no 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 everyone please go perfectly beta what i told you about the refractive period what is the refractive period the refractive period whenever there is one action potential is already going on if you will give the stimulus the nerve will not show any type of response why because one action potential is already going on this is called as refractive period and this refractive period is divided into two type absolute refractive period this refractive period is divided into two type absolute refractive period and relative refractive period relative refractive period right beta now i told you if you have remember suppose this is the nerve fiber this is the threshold value so this is starting from here and then now after starting this is going to the upside then coming to the dyne going to the hyperpolarization and then coming like this right beta and what i told you suppose this is point number a b c d and e right beta so i told you the first of all the refractive period number one that is absolute refractive period this absolute refractive period starts from the point a it goes up to the total depolarization of the nerve fiber 
and it rem remain up to the one third during the repolarization up to this level. Right, beta? So, from point A to C, that is absolute refractive period. This is not from A to B. Always remember, from A to B, this is not the absolute refractive period conclusively. If there is point C is given, yes, A to C is absolute refractive period. And then from C to E, this is called as your relative refractive period. So, this is basically the asking in this question. Now, please answer. Now, please answer. Yes, yes, Ashwarya, you are right, Bida. Yes, Bida, this is A to C is absolute refractive period, right. So, can you see in this image, from this A to C, this is absolute refractive period and then from C to E, this is called your relative refractive period, relative refractive period from C to E, right, Bida? So, now please answer for this question. This point A to B is absolute refractive period, no. Point B to D is relative refractive period, no. Point A to D is absolute refractive period, no. Point C to E is relative refractive period, yes. The right answer for this question is point number C to E is relative refractive period, right, beta? Relative refractive period. So, I hope now it is clear. Now, everyone is right, yes, beta? This is point number C to E is relative refractive period, okay? Coming to the next question, before going to the next question, there is rule number 13 and what rule number 13 says, you don't need more time, you need less destruction, so beta stay focused, always remember in mind, you don't need extra time, you need only to less destruction, koi bhi aapko kuch kahe, abhi in tera dino ke andar aapko kya karna hai beta? आपको सिर्फ और सिर्फ जो भी चीज आपने अभी पढ़ी हुई है आप उसको अच्छे से रिवाइज करें अच्छे से दिमाग में सोचें एंड स्टे फोकस्ड राइट बेटा कुछ भी नहीं करना है कुछ भी इधर उधर अपना डिस्ट्रक्शन नहीं लगाना है यू हैव टू बी स्टे फोकस्ड ऑल द टाइम राइट सो लेट्स गो फॉर द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन यस 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 एवरीबडी इज राइट ओके बेटा नाउ द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन a 30 year female post history of RTA admitted in surgical ward. She is having grade 3 fracture shaft femur. Hematological analysis shows serum potassium level 5.2 milli equivalent per liter. What will be the effect on resting membrane potential of cell? It means what is happening beta? Due to the injury of this muscles, what is happening? This muscle potassium is going to be leak out and this is going to be increased or this is going to be mixed into the blood. But what is happening with this? What is the level of this potassium is given into this question? This is 5.2 milli equivalent per liter. Now please answer me. What will be the effect on the resting membrane potential of the cell? Will it be the more negative, more positive, initially positive than negative or it will remain same? Yes, my dear friends. Please answer. Yes, beta. Many of you are giving C, A. Some of you are giving, yes, beta, C, A, C, A. Beta, please read the question carefully. My advice is that read the question carefully. Yes, beta, read the question carefully. Potassium level kitna hai beta? How much is the potassium level? Potassium level is 5.2 milli equivalent per liter. This is 5.2. So, potassium level is 5.2. What should be the answer? What should be the answer? Yes, now, now, yes, beta, now you are right. Now you are right, beta. Many of you are right, yes. Yes, Kheta, yes, everyone, Sanjay, Rohit, everyone, you are right, beta. Yes, beta, Narayan, Vidya, everyone, Ravi Chandran, yes, beta, everyone, you are right. This is D. It will remain same. The resting membrane potential of the cell will remain same. How, beta, how? First, you should identify what is the normal potassium level, what is the mild potassium level to be, whenever the potassium level to be increased, then it can be divided into mild, moderate and severe. So, mild kitna hota hai? How much is the mild value? The mild potassium level that is beta 5.5 to 6.5. 
then moderate is 6.528 and the severe is more than 8 right and how much is given in this question this is 5.3 this is given in the question that is 5.3 it means this 5.3 that is normal or not that is normal or not sahi hai ke nahi hai then this lady the serum potassium level is absolutely fine right bada because the mild that is 5.5 to 6.5 then the moderate is 6.5 to 8 and severe is more than 8. So nothing will be happen with the resting membrane potential because serum potassium level is perfectly normal. Right, Peter? So that is why there is no effect on this resting membrane potential. When could be is more negative? Jada negative kab hota beta? Or whenever there will be the more positive. Suppose this is this is your cell. Suppose this is your cell, right, Peter? And what is the normal house of the potassium that is inside of the cell? Normal condition, this potassium moves out freely, right, beta? So that the after some times moving of this potassium, there is resting membrane potential is always maintained. Now, what happens? Suppose outside potassium is already high. Outside potassium is already high. It means this is called as hyperkalemia condition. And in this hyperkalemia condition, Will this potassium can be able to move out? No, because now it cannot go against to concentration gradient. So inside high, outside high. So no movement of this potassium can be happen and potassium starts accumulating inside. And what could be happen? That negativity is going to be more positivity. So this is going to be more positive. In the hyperkalemia, it is more positive. Now what could be happen if there is a hypokalemia? Suppose if there is less calcium is uh, less potassium is here, what could be happen? More amount of potassium will come out. More amount of potassium will come out and this will lead to the more negativity inside of the cell. But at this question, the potassium level is perfectly fine in this lady. So resting membrane potential will remain same. Okay, Buddha? this will remain same. Few more things about this potassium. Few more things. Number one. Whenever there will the potassium will be increased, there will always changes you can see in the ECG. Aapko ECG ke andar hamisa changes milenge. Let's talk about what are the changes you can see into this ECG. Whenever there is a mild hyperkalemia, if we'll talk about the changes which you can see in the ECG, this is your peaked T wave. What you can see, beta? this is peak T wave and this is prolonged PR sigma. So two things you will be identified, number one peak T wave and number two is prolonged PR segment. If moderately hyperkalemia, we will talk about, if there is moderately hyperkalemia, can you see the changes in the ECG and what is happening? This P wave is gone, so absent P wave or loss of P wave, then prolonged QRS complex, yes better, can you see this prolonged QRS complex and then ST segment elevation. ST segment elevation and also this ectopic beads and ascap rhythms. So this is you can see in the moderate hyperkalemic condition. Talking about in the severe hyperkalemic, severe hyperkalemic condition. In severe hyperkalemic condition, what is this beta? What is this ECG? This is called as sine wave. What we call this sine wave, right beta? And this sine wave is seen in severely hyperkalemia severe hyperkalemia the sine wave appearance is start into the ecg so in this progressive widening of qrs ventricular fibrillation asystole and all these things can you see so sine wave pattern is seen in severe hyperkalemia severe hyperkalemia right beta yes beta this is the sine wave so next question A 66 year old male hypertensive and diabetic on regular treatment, BP maintaining regulation by baroreceptor in his peripheral circulation is which type of homeostatic mechanism? Yes, beta, please answer me. Please answer me for the question number 6. Yes, beta. Yes, what is the answer of this question? What is the answer of this question, Vida? Yes. 
मेंटेनिंग रेगुलेशन बाय बैरो रिसेप्टर हिज ब्लड प्रेशर इज विच टाइप ऑफ होम्योस्टेटिक मैकेनिज्म बेटा मेंटेनिंग ब्लड प्रेशर वाय हाउ इट कुड बी द पॉजिटिव फीडबैक यस बेटा यस माय डियर फ्रेंड्स सम ऑफ यू आर सेइंग ए सम ऑफ यू आर सेइंग बी देन सी देन डी यस बेटा इन दिस इन दिस कंडीशन बेटा आई टोल्ड यू वन एवर व्हाट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ होम्योस्टेसिस व्हाट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ होम्योस्टेसिस होम्योस्टेसिस मींस ऑलवेज सेम रिमेन कांस्टेंट होम्योस्टेटिक मींस रिमेन सेम so inside of the body environment it should be always remain same and if there is any changes is occurring it should always bring back to the normal condition what is happening in the baro receptor this baro receptor they are present these baro receptor peripheral baro receptor they are present at the level of aortic arc and carotid sinus where they are present aortic arc and carotid sinus and what is happening they are sensitive for what they are sensitive for mean arterial pressure mean arterial pressure so whenever there is pressure is going to be high these <coughs> receptors will start firing and they will send the signal to the brain and this brain will give the feedback to the heart and heart rate will be dropped down heart rate will be dropped down so this is how this bp, BP can be maintained via this peripheral baro receptors and these baro receptors they are present at where at the aortic arc and carotid sinus jaisa ki ye apna heart hai beta suppose this is heart so one pipeline one pipeline is coming out like this right then going down so this is aorta and one is going up into the carotid artery internal carotid artery and external carotid artery and over here this number one things this is present over here this is called as carotid sinus receptor and one receptor is present over here this is called as aortic arc sign uh, aortic arc receptor so these two receptor whenever the bp will be increased whenever the bp will be increased these receptor will immediately sense that bp is going to be increased what could be happen if bp is increased this pressure inside of this vessel will be then increased and due to this high pressure might be this vessel can be ruptured or they can be damaged so this receptor will give a feedback to the brain and immediately brain will response and this heart rate will become the drop down so what is happening which type of feedback this is called as negative feedback this is called as negative feedback negative feedback right beta so bp regulation it is a type of negative feedback yes beta coming to the next can you see in this picture homeostasis control condition blood pressure is going to be rise monitored via baro receptor and this is going into the cardiovascular center into the medulla and what could be happen the effect will start from the brain right now the next question what is the marked area in given graph the marked area in the given graph yes beta this area please identify this area what is this marked area in the given graph will it be tidal volume expiratory reserve volume expiratory capacity functional residual capacity functional residual capacity yes please answer for this question yes beta please answer for this question yes yes my dear friends everyone you are right everyone you are right yes beta yes 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 this is this is frc this is frc yes my dear friend this is frc right answer for this question is frc functional residual capacity all right 
can you see can you tell me what is this thing what is this thing this is your tidal volume what is this this is your tidal volume what is this thing this thing this is called as your inspiratory reserve volume inspiratory reserve volume what is this my dear friends this is called your expiratory reserve volume and this is which is remain inside of the lung this is called as residual volume residual volume so tidal volume inspiratory reserve volume expiratory reserve volume and residual volume right beta now these volumes few of them are volumes and now talking about the capacity so which capacity is this from inspiratory reserve volume to tidal volume from here this is called as inspiratory capacity then talking about this from here up to here this is your expiratory capacity right beta then this this one this is your functional residual capacity always remember so this functional residual capacity it is is equal to erv plus rv expiratory reserve volume plus residual volume kya hai beta ye frc kya hota hai frc hota hai beta aapka erv plus rv erv plus rv right so this is your actually the frc now can you tell me beta what is this and what is this what is point number a and what is point number b can you answer me yes beta what is point number a and what is point number b yes beta point number a point number a is vital capacity and point number b is total lung capacity point number b is total lung capacity so point number a vital capacity point number b total lung capacity so now can you appreciate this beta this is tidal volume this is tidal volume inspiratory capacity frc expiratory capacity vital capacity and total lung capacity now my question is that how you can measure this frc how you can measure this frc frc you can measure via few things number one that is called as helium dilution method always remember beta helium dilution method number two nitrogen washout test nitrogen washout test and number three is plethysmography plethysmo graphy plethysmography and the commonest which we use that is the plethysmography this is most commonly used always remember so frc or also tlc and rv we can measure via this helium dilution method nitrogen washout test this nitrogen washout test is the multiple nitrogen washout test this is multiple if we are doing the single breath nitrogen test we will do this for which one we will do this for measuring the dead space dead space okay beta so for measuring the dead space we use single <coughs> used nitrogen washout test right so right answer for this question is frc and for rest of the things rest of the things rest of the things we use spirometer yes beta spirometry for rest of the things we use the spirometry to hamesha ek yaad rakhna beta chhota sa mnemonic hai ki jisme bhi residual volume aaye residual volume kis kis mein aa raha hai number 1 frc number 2 itself residual volume and number 3 tlc jisme bhi residual volume aaye we cannot measure via this spirometry right beta so for measuring this residual volume part capacity what we will use we will use helium dilution method multiple nitrogen washout test and body plethysmography okay coming to the next question coming to the next question now please answer please answer for this next question yes beta what is the next question a person 
A preterm baby delivered by a diabetic mother having respiratory distress condition due to deficiency of that is DPPC, sphingomyelin, immature pneumocyte type 1 due to absence of dust cell. What is the answer for this question? Please answer me. Yes, my dear friends. Preterm baby delivered by a diabetic mother having respiratory distress condition due to the deficiency of Yes, everyone you are right. This is DPPC and this DPPC stands for dipalmatyl phosphatidyl choline. Dipalmatidyl phosphatidyl choline. Okay, beta? So this, this DPPC and this DPPC also called as lecithin. This is also called as lecithin. This is the most common surfactant in the lungs. And this surfactant, talking about this surfactant, most common this is lecithin. And this is secreted by a which pneumocyte? This is which pneumocyte, guys? This is type 2 pneumocyte. Type 2 pneumocyte. And now please answer me. When this surfactant start producing inside the baby's lungs start producing start producing in which intrauterine life in which intrauterine life it starts producing it start producing at 20th week of intrauterine life okay beta it start appearing start appearing in amniotic fluid start appearing in amniotic fluid this is from 28 to 32 week intrauterine life yes my dear friends so start producing at 20th week and starts appearing in amniotic fluid that is 28 to 32 week that is why hum hamesha koshish karte hain we always try to go for up to the 28th week of the intrauterine life to deliver this baby because we just want to ensure whether this pneumocyte type 2 they are properly functioning or not right brother? now one more things one more thing which test which test we will do for measuring this surfactant which test we will do for measuring this surfactant and second will do for measuring the surfactant is LS ratio that is LS ratio the test which we use this is LS ratio and in normal it should be more than 2 2 or more than 2 right brother? now the second most common surfactant that is your sphingomyelin this is your second most common surfactant second most common surfactant right beta now can you tell me beta what is the function of type 1 pneumocyte this type 1 pneumocyte this is the mainly function is the mainly function is gas exchange gas exchange gas exchange this is via type 1 pneumocyte what about the dust cell dust cell is the macrophages of the lung they are the macrophagic cell of lung macrophages of the lung right brother? so type 1 pneumocyte they are for the gas exchange and type 2 pneumocyte they produce a surfactant which is the most common surfactant that is dppc dipalmatyl phosphatidylcholine also called as lecithin and at which intrauterine is it start producing this is at the 20th week when it start appearing into the amniotic fluid this is in the 28 to 32 week and what is the test we will use for this that is LS ratio lecithin is sphingomyelin ratio and normal it should be 2 or more than 2 right brother so this is all about this surfactant right now one more things what is the function of this surfactant what is the function of this surfactant the function of this surfactant is actually decrease the surface tension it decrease the surface tension and it's increase the compliance of the lung increase the compliance of the lung 
it decreases the surface tension and it increases the compliance of the lung. This is the function of this surfactant, right, brother? So, जो भी surface tension होती है for this uh, alveoli, this alveoli के surface tension कम करता है and compliance means stretchability. So, stretchability is increased with the help of this surfactant, right, brother? Yes. So, right answer for this question is A, DPPC, right? Before question number 9, there is rule number 9. Always walk with unshakable confidence. It make you appear more powerful. Always remember, beta. Walk with an unshakable confidence. It make you more powerful. Yes, beta. So, this is the rule number 9 before the question number 9. And my best wishes to all of you for this upcoming FMG exam, beta. May God bless you. Aap sab log is 30 July ko pass ho jayen, beta. Right? So, I will pray to the God. That's God will give you all the strength, all the power to pass this exam on this 30th of July. So, next question is, what is true about the cell membrane? What is true about the cell membrane? Now, please answer for this question. What is true about the cell membrane? Yes, beta. Yes, Nilesh. We will pass. Definitely, we are going to be passed. What is true about cell membrane? Yes, beta. Now, please answer for this question. Please answer for this question. What is true about cell membrane? Yes, beta. Please answer for question number 9. Uh, some of you are saying A. Beta, please read the question very carefully. What is the question is saying? Question is asking about true about the cell membrane. Question is asking true about the cell membrane. Please read the question very carefully. Beta, question is asking true about the cell membrane. How all of your kings say, you can say the C? C is myelin sheath mainly made up of the glycoprotein. Is this true or false? Myelin sheath mainly made up of glycoprotein. How it could be C beta? What is true about the cell membrane? Beta, read the question very carefully. Read the question carefully and read the options very carefully. This is a little bit, just only language is there. Okay, now go one by one. Cell membrane, we have talked about the cell membrane. It mainly contains more lipid, less protein. No, what I told you, the most of the membranes, the most of the membrane, they contain 55% protein, 40% lipid and 5% carbohydrate, 55% protein, 40% lipid and 5% carbohydrate. So, number one mainly contains more lipid, less protein. This is false, right, brother? Number two, more thickness readily allows all permeable ions into the cell. Beta, if you will increase the thickness of the cell membrane, koi bhi cheez kya properly andar ja paayegi kya? Nahi ja paayegi. It cannot allow more readily whenever the thickness will be increased. When thickness will be decreased, then only the substance can readily allow to across this cell membrane. So, more thickness readily allows to all permeable iron into the cell, again false. And what is the thickness of this cell membrane? 7.5 to 10 nanometer. 7.5 to 10 nanometer. Right, beta? Number 3. Number 3 is... Myelin sheath mainly made up of the glycoprotein. Beta, if you remember, I told you that's uh, the lowest protein contained per gram of tissue. Lowest protein contained per gram of tissue or the highest lipid contained per gram of tissue. That is your myelin sheath. Right, beta? And this myelin sheath is mainly made up of not the protein, mainly made up of the lipid. Right, beta? So, this myelin sheath is mainly made up of the lipid, not the protein. 
so this is again false the partial degradation happens during endocytosis what is endocytosis the endocytosis is this is your cell right brother now suppose any biggest amount any bigger substance which need to be takes inside of the cell but this bigger amount of substance it cannot fix or it cannot come into this properly channel so now what is happening beta now what is happening this membrane will come like this will make a covering over here and then what could be happen this partial degradation of this membrane will be happen and this partial degradation will allow to this bigger amount of substance inside of the cell and this process is called as endocytosis this is called as endocytosis so partial degradation of the cell membrane during endocytosis absolutely right answer this is how the macrophages actually functions and there are two type of things done via this macrophages for this endocytosis pro program that is number 1 pinocytosis and phagocytosis right brother so during this endocytosis this is how this thing is happening so partial degradation of this cell membrane is happening so i hope now it is clear now it is clear so what should be the right answer of this question the right answer of this question should be d right brother so what is true about the cell membrane what is true about the cell membrane the partial degradation happens during endocytosis right brother and this is the protein dependent yes yes shake this is clathrin protein dependent very good beta very good yes this is clathrin protein dependent very good so i hope now this question is <coughs> clearly understood by all of you guys talking about the next question number 10 please answer for this question a group of soldier at 13000 feet in kashmir was staying in a bunker during cold night in morning few of them got severely sick and eventually died during post mortem found that that occurred by the lack of oxygen what is the most probable hypoxia can be seen in this condition yes beta most common hypoxia yes my dear friends please answer for this question number 10 yes beta answer for this question number 10 is yes every one of you are right beta this is hypoxic hypoxia this is hypoxic hypoxia so what is hypoxia whenever there is a lack of let's talk about something about this hypoxia and i told you beta whenever this is the cell right beta whenever there is no oxygen is coming inside of this cell no oxygen coming inside of the cell it means this is called as hypoxia so whenever lack of oxygen inside of the cell is called as hypoxia what could be the possibilities there are four type of hypoxia which we have talked about number 1 hypoxic hypoxia number 2 that is anemic hypoxia number 3 that is ischemic hypoxia or stagnant hypoxia and number 4 histotoxic hypoxia now please tell me beta where is the histotoxic hypoxia you can see histotoxic hypoxia histotoxic hypoxia histotoxic hypoxia is seen in cyanide poisoning cyanide poisoning right beta histotoxic seen in cyanide poisoning now let's talk about this anemic hypoxia anemic hypoxia where is this anemic hypoxia you can see this anemic hypoxia you can see into this carbon monoxide poisoning co poisoning right beta co poisoning and this hypoxic hypoxia hypoxic hypoxia this hypoxic hypoxia you can see like in corona high altitude high altitude etc so corona high altitude this is showing this hypoxic hypoxia 
talking about this ischemic hypoxia ischemic hypoxia so this ischemic hypoxia whenever there is a any injury of this blood vessels or anything is happening so in ischemic hypoxia you can see in like mi condition and all so this is ischemic hypoxia yes beta so this is how the different different type of hypoxia you have seen so right answer of this question is hypoxic hypoxia all right <clears throat> let's talk about the next question yes beta bread and butter question a 23 year male post head trauma admitted in icu during his daily routine checkup abg analysis shows the ph is 7.63 paco2 is 44 mmhg pao2 is 86 mmhg bicarbonate is 39 what is the most likely condition in this patient will it be the respiratory acidosis metabolic acidosis respiratory acidosis metabolic alkalosis please answer for this question now yes my dear friends all of you should be right i hope that all of you should be right for this question yes beta all of you should be right for this question start answering for question number 11 what is the right answer for the question number 11 ph is 7.63 pso2 44 bicarbonate 39 only these three value were required that's all only these three value were required ph 7.63 paco2 44 and bicarbonate is 39 please answer for this question yes yes guys please answer answer for question number 11 what is happening with the ph beta the ph is going into the acidic or alkaline acidic or alkaline the normal ph is normal ph of the blood is this is 7.3 35 to 7.45 right beta 7.35 to 7.45 if the ph of the body is less than 7.35 this condition we call this acidosis and if more than 7.45 this we call this alkalosis alkalosis right beta so less than 7.35 acidosis more than 7.45 alkalosis right so pH is 7.63 it means this is alkalosis so now this two options is rule out it can cannot be the acidosis it could not be the acidosis so now what is remain with this this is only the case of alkalosis now who is the culprit on this condition who is the culprit beta please see who is the culprit the culprit is let's talk about first of all CO2 what is the normal value of the PaCO2 what is the normal value of PaCO2 the CO2, PaCO2 normal value is 35 to 45 mm Hg. 35 to 45 mm Hg. Right, brother? Now, what is the normal value of the bicarbonate? The normal value of the bicarbonate is 22 to 28. 22 to 28. And I told you, brother, this PaCO2 is acidic in nature. CO2 is acidic in nature and bicarbonate is alkaline in nature this is alkaline in nature so agar bicarbonate badega if bicarbonate will be increased the body will be alkaline if co2 will be increased the body will be acidic why because co2 is a nature in acidic and bicarbonate nature is alkaline right beta so now what is happening in this question as you can see the paco2 is 44 so this paco2 is normal right beta this is normal and what about this bicarbonate this bicarbonate is 39 bicarbonate is 39 so now if bicarbonate is 39 it means it is increased and what could be the condition bicarbonate is increased so this is the alkaline condition can be happen inside the body and yes that is why the ph of the body is going to be 7.63 and this is going into the alkaline nature so this is going to be alkalosis 
Now for bicarbonate, we use the term metabolic and for CO2, we use the term respiratory. So now the culprit is bicarbonate. So what should be the answer? This is your metabolic alkalosis. The right answer for this question is metabolic alkalosis. Right, Bida? Metabolic alkalosis. Coming to the next question. Yes, my dear friends. Yes, my dear friends. Yes, Bida. The following graph shows changes in tubular fluid concentration in various substance along the length of proximal tubule. Which of the following line reflects the changes in concentration of the creatinine? So it means it is asking about what? This is asking about the creatinine. This is asking about the creatinine. So now let's talk about, now let's talk about this graph. So what is you can what you can see better in this graph? What is this graph? Now please answer. What is this graph? What is this graph beta? Now please answer. This graph, can you see beta this graph? Over here, this is the glomerulus. This is the glomerulus area. And now what is happening? At the glomerulus, filtration is occurring. And this is your PCT. And this is the end of proximal. Right? Yes, Veda. So, first of all, at the level of this glomerulus, at this level, this is the glomerulus level, and then what is this? The next is this is the area, this is the PCT, and this is the end of proximal tubules. Right, Veda? Now, what is happening? And is all the substance which is passing through this glomerulus later on they are going to be decreased into the PCT. It means what is happening? Why they are decreasing? Why they are decreasing beta? Because reabsorption is occurring. So from the glomerulus, the filtration is occurring. But later on, this all these substances are reabsorbing back. So concentration into the PCT going to be drop down of these substances. Right beta? So this that is why this is going to be dropped down. Right? And later on, ultimately it is disappears. So I told you beta, reabsorption occurs 100% for which substance? That is glucose and amino acid. That is glucose and amino acid. I told you better, 100% reabsorption of glucose plus amino acid. Right, better? So that is why this E substance, this is your glucose. Right, better? This is your glucose. Glucose. Right? Now, the next is D. D means the substance which is actually filtrating at the level of this glomerulus at the level of this glomerulus but later on some of the part from this substance is going to be reabsorbed so that is why the concentration is going to be again decrease but not completely it's gone it means not fully reabsorbed some of the part from this substance is reabsorbed and what is this this is the bicarbonates right brother this is your bicarbonate so this is your bicarbonate Talking about the next, any substance which is filtrating at the level of glomerulus and it neither reabsorbs, neither secreted and what is happening? It is going into the same concentration out from this tubules. It means any substance which is neither reabsorbs nor secreted. Which type of substance this is? This is called as inulin. So this C point is your inulin. Right, beta? Then talking about the next is this is. So at the level of creatinine it is filtrate but later on the concentration in the PCT is going to be increased. It means ek bar to ye chana, ek bar to ye glomerulus se bahar nikla lekin uske baad PCT ke andar blood se isko ol dal diya gaya. It means it is secreted into the PCT. It means at the level of glomerulus first of all it filtered out but later on at the level of PCT from the blood, it is again secreted into the PCT. So that is why this part and this part, it increase the level of the substance into the PCT. And which type of this substance this is? This is actually the creatinine. So creatinine clearance is 139 ml per minute. So that is why 
एट द लेवल ऑफ ग्लोमेरुलस फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल इट क्लियर विद द रेट ऑफ 125 फाइव एम बेटा 125 की रेट से पहले तो छन जाएगा बट एक सौ एम इसको निकलना है सो लेटर ऑन क्या होएगा ये आपके ट्यूब्यूल्स के अंदर आके और सीक्रेट होएगा एंड दैट इज वाई द लेवल इज गोइंग टू बी हायर इन टू द ट्यूब्यूल्स सो दिस इज एक्चुअली योर क्रिएटिन राइट बेटा एंड द नेक्स्ट सब्सटेंस दिस इज एक्चुअली इज गोइंग टू बी वेरी वेरी हाई and the dye which we used for measuring the renal plasma flow that is the pah so this pah clearance is more so that is why it's first of all filters and then it secreted so this is pah so now you can easily identify this line this is glucose this is bicarbonate this is inulin this is creatinine and line number a is pah and the question is asking question is asking about the creatinine yes beta this is creatinine so what is the point number denoting this creatinine answer should be b answer should be point number b right beta point number b is creatinine point number b is creatinine yes beta everyone you are right everyone you are right yes my dear friends chalo beta to beta aapko bas ek cheez yaad rakhni hai iske andar pe कि जो सबसे पहले ग्लोमेरुलस के लेवल पे है वो ग्लूकोज सबसे पहले निकल रहा है और ग्लूकोज का 100% परसेंट हो रहा है दैट इज वाई डिसअपियर्स एट द लेटर इन द लेट एरिया ऑफ प्रोक्सीमल टीब्यूल बाई कार्बोनेट सेवेंटी परसेंट रीअब्जॉर्ब्स होता है सो दैट इज वाई इट इज गोइंग टू बी लेस कंसनट्रेशन एट द लेवल ऑफ पी सी टी इनोलिन इट नाइदर रीअब्जॉर्ब नाइदर सीक्रेट्स जो लेवल पे फिल्टर हुआ है उसी लेवल पे बाहर निकल जाएगा सो इनोलिन टॉकिंग अबाउट दिस क्रिएटिन इन this creatinine it first of all it gets filtered and then it secreted so this is creatinine and then this is the pah it is also first of all filters and then secreted more so amount concentration inside of the pct and tubules is going to be higher okay beta it's going to be higher next question going to before the next question beta one quote for all of you If God always remember is shaking your nest, is if God always remember is shaking your nest, it means He is preparing you to fly. Always remember, बेटा. So अपने को थकना नहीं है, बेटा. अपने को रुकना नहीं है. अपन जानते हैं कि अपन ने पिछले चार महीने में, पांच महीने में बहुत अच्छे से मेहनत करी है. और ये मेहनत अपनी बेकार नहीं जाने वाली है, बेटा. इस 30 जुलाई को अपन पास होने वाले हैं. इस तीस जुलाई को आप पास होने वाले हो आप पास होके रहोगे आपने इतना पढ़ा है इतना पढ़ा है इतनी प्रिपरेशन करी है यू हैव टू बी पास एंड यू आर गोइंग टू बी पास ऑन दिस थर्टी ऑफ जुलाई गॉड इज विद यू वी आर विद यू एवरी वन इज विद यू राइट बेटा सो यू आर गोइंग टू बी पास ऑन दिस थर्टी ऑफ जुलाई राइट सो कमिंग टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन यस बेटा कमिंग टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन वट इज ट्रू अबाउट द जी एफ आर वट इज ट्रू अबाउट द जी एफ आर यस बेटा वट इज ट्रू अबाउट द जी एफ आर वट इज ट्रू अबाउट द जी एफ आर बेटा answer for this question yes my dear friends what is true about the gfr efferent arterial constriction decrease the gfr efferent arterial constriction increase the gfr tubulo glomerular feedback increase the gfr and adh stimulation lead to decrease the gfr what is true about the gfr some of you saying b a d better read the question very carefully read the question very carefully beta no beta read the question carefully and then answer what is true about the gfr what is true about the gfr yes 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 now you got it yes 
Yes, Nirmala, you are right, Bida. You are right. True about GFR, Bida. See, the right answer of this question is ADH stimulation lead to decrease GFR. ADH stimulation lead to decrease GFR. I told you, Bida, what is happening about this ADH? This ADH is having two receptor, V1 receptor and V2 receptor. This V1 receptor, it works on the arterioles. arterioles and what is happening due to this arteriole stimulation these arterioles are going to be constriction constriction so that is why the gfr will be decrease gfr will be decrease at v2 receptor they are present on where they are present at the level of collecting ducts on the p cell on the P cell and through this, through this, the aquaporin channel activates. Aquaporin channel is activates. Right, Bada? And who is the secondary messenger? Who is the secondary messenger at this V2 receptor? This is CAMP is the secondary messenger at this V2 receptor and this collecting duct. Right, Bada? In this collecting duct. And who is the secondary messenger at V1 receptor? This is IP3, DAG and calcium. Right, but IP3, DAG or calcium. So, this is the V1 receptor and V2 receptor and what is happening, but for understanding of this question, you have to understand first. You have to understand first that suppose this is, this is your Bowman capsule. Right, but this is your afferent arterioles, this is glomerulus and this is efferent arteriole, right Buddha? This is efferent arteriole. So, afferent arteriole, efferent arteriole, right? Afferent and efferent arteriole. Now, now what is happening Buddha? Suppose the blood is coming, blood is coming from this afferent arteriole, right Buddha? And then it filters at the level of this glomerulus at this level and then it comes down like this and then the remaining amount of the blood is goes out from this efferent arteriole. Now what the question is saying? The question is saying when what is true about the GFR? But first of all what could be the happen if you will constrict this efferent arteriole? If you will constrict this efferent arteriole, what will happen if you will constrict this efferent arteriole? Ko, अगर आप इसको कंस्ट्रिक्शन कर देते हैं बेटा तो सबसे पहले क्या होगा द प्रेशर विल बी हाई ऑन दिस ग्लोमेरुलस सो इनिशियली फॉर फ्यू सेकंड्स द जीएफआर विल बी इंक्रीज बट लेटर ऑन ड्यू टू दिस ट्रैफिक जाम जितना छन सकता था छन गया एंड ड्यू टू दिस ट्रैफिक जाम व्हाट कुड बी हैपन दिस जीएफआर विल बी डिक्रीज सो इनिशियली इट विल इंक्रीज देन इट विल डिक्रीज सो दिस इज ड्यू टू द इफरेंट आर्टेरियल कंस्ट्रिक्शन ओके नंबर 2 what is happening? So, this is efferent arterial constriction decrease the GFR. No, beta. Initially, first of all, it will increase the GFR. Why? Due to high pressure. But later on, it will decrease the GFR. Right, beta? Talking about this efferent arterial constriction increase the GFR. Yes, beta. See over here. If you will constrict this efferent arterial, if you will constrict this efferent arterial, what about the blood? Blood will come less at the level of this GFR. And what about this blood? This blood which is coming at this level of glomerulus. This glomerulus cannot filter properly all the blood due to the less pressure into the glomerulus. And that is how this GFR will be decreased. So whenever you are constricting this afferent arteriole, the GFR is going to be dropped down. It is going to be dropped down. Right, Buddha? So again, this is not the right answer. Afferent arteriole constriction increase the GFR. Next is tube low glomerular feedback increase the GFR. This tube, tube low glomerular feedback is given by which cell? Which cell? This is given via, suppose this is coming like this. If you have remember, I told you. And over here, this dark color of cells are present over here. This dark color of cells are present over here. And this cells is called as macula, macula densa macula densa right brother 
and through this macula densa what is happening which channel is present over here there is a presence of sodium chlorine and in which area this is this is in dct this is in dct so dct mein kya hai beta macula densa and they are the receptors so what happens whenever this fluid or the filtrate is going down into the renal tubules and if there is no properly reabsorption is occurring so more amount of sodium is reaching at the level of this macula densa and this macula densa immediately will sense that why this more sodium is coming up to me it means might be the gfr is happening all this way but there is less reabsorption of all of these elements and this is the problematic condition for this person so immediately this macula densa will give this feedback to the gfr and uh, to this glomerulus and this glomerulus will decrease the gfr so this is a type of feedback this is called as given by the tubules to the glomerulus called as tubulo glomerular feedback this is called as tubulo glomerular feedback and it always decrease the gfr right beta so number 3 that is tubulo glomerular feedback increase the gfr no it's absolutely wrong adh stimulation uh, yes beta again see i told you the adh stimulation v1 receptor is present over where v1 receptor is present over afferent arteriole this is the v1 so now what is happening due to this stimulation of this v1 receptor via this adh hormone this afferent arteriole will be constrict ye band hoega ki nahi beta ye band ho jayega aur jaise hi afferent arteriole constriction hoega what about the glomerulus filtration this gfr will be drop down this gfr will be drop down so i hope now it is clear i hope now it's clear beta so adh stimulation lead to decrease gfr is the right answer of this question yes beta talking about the next yes what is the least likely about the ventricular action potential curve yes please answer now please answer for this question now what is the least likely about the ventricular action potential curve yes shakir so i hope now it is clear beta tubulo glomerular feedback yes beta please answer for this question number 14 yes what is the least likely about the ventricular action potential curve yes my dear friends please read the question very carefully beta please read the question carefully this is actually the ventricular action potential curve right beta and what is happening many of you are saying c d sir c or d beta it is question is asking about the least likely means which is going to be the wrong or this is going to the least condition means it cannot be happen yes yes aditi yes beta you are right yes you are right my dear friends no beta many of you are saying phase 4 is due to sodium potassium atps pump it's d many of you are saying c phase 2 is due to potassium efflux and calcium influx beta c the right answer of this question is a phase 1 correspond to sodium influx this is not the phase 1 for the sodium beta what is happening what is happening please look at in this diagram first of all this is the zero phase right beta this is the zero phase and in this zero phase what is happening as you can see from minus 90 to it is going into the plus so which ion should move inside first of all this is sodium so sodium what is happening sodium influx this is sodium influx and this phase is called as depolarization phase this is called as depolarization phase depolarization right beta depolarization 
now after next time after this this is the phase 1 and in this phase 1 this is the early repolarization phase and in this phase 1 what is happening the potassium will start coming out so potassium comes out this is phase 1 so potassium efflux now this is called as this plateau phase what we call this plateau phase and this is phase 2 and why this plateau phase is happening because this ventricle wants to get contract for the sometimes it want to remain contract right brother and for remaining contract what is happening potassium is continuously moving out so inside of the cell it can become the negative but now for countering of this potassium uh, from outside one more positive ion gets inside and that is the calcium so what is happening in this phase 2 potassium continuously effluxing but it is counter attacked via calcium so calcium is in flux so due to this condition due to this calcium beta due to this calcium due to this calcium this plateau phase is occurring right beta and then after some times at this level this calcium will be closed and now the potassium is continuously moving out from the cell and due to this this down phase is comes and this phase is called as repolarization repolarization phase and this repolarization occurring why due to potassium efflux due to potassium efflux right brother and now this is phase 4 this phase 4 is called as polarized state polarized state and in this polarized state what is happening beta now few of the sodium is gets inside of the cell and few of the potassium gets outside of the cell now apne ko pata hai beta potassium mainly house inside of the cell to potassium ko uh, potassium ko hamesha cell ke andar rehna hai and sodium should be always remain outside of the cell so now the sodium potassium pump will start functioning for maintaining of this polarized state and three sodium gets out and two potassium gets in with the help of one atp so this polarized state phase 4 is maintained by this thing this is the sodium potassium atps pump so at the zero phase this is sodium influx depolarization phase number one this is early repolarization due to potassium efflux phase number two due to potassium efflux plus calcium influx and phase number three that is the repolarization due to the potassium efflux and phase number four this is again the polarized state and this is due to sodium potassium atps pump sodium potassium atps pump right brother so now let's talk about see the option phase 3 correspond potassium efflux yes it is right brother it is absolutely right phase 2 is due to potassium efflux calcium influx yes it is also right and phase 4 is due to sodium potassium atps pump yes it is also also absolutely right but this is not the phase 1 which correspond to the sodium influx this is actually the phase 0 right brother so right answer of this question is a okay okay beta now the next question the next question is in jvp can an a wave seen due to yes beta so jvp can an a wave seen due to yes my dear friends can an a wave seen due to now please answer can an a wave seen due to beta can an a wave Yes, 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 many of you are right. Yes, 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 my dear friends. Many of you are right. Canon A wave in JVP. This is due to complete heart block. This is seen in complete heart block. Yes, absolutely, you are right, brother. Canon A wave is seen in complete heart block. What is the JVP? So now, first of all, you should tell me. this is a 
C, X, V and Y. Yes, beta. Why this A wave is occurring? Why this A wave is occurring? This A wave is occurring due to atrial A wave due to atrial systole. Atrial systole. Right? Understanding of this JVP, one more thing you have to see first. This JVP is actually the pressure of this right atria. Kaun se atria ka pressure hai, beta? This is the pressure of this right atria. So whenever this right atria pressure will be increased, this will lead to increased pressure in the venous. Right? So this is called as JVP waves. Now, at which which condition this atria pressure will be increased? So first of all, this atria pressure will be increased when this atria will start contracting, when it is going into the systole. So due to this systole, what could be the pressure in the atria? It should be high. And that is why in the JVP, you will see this A wave. Right, Buddha? And then I told you in the cardiac cycle, the last one third ventricular filling is happens due to this atrial contraction. Initial two third, this is due to the gravity and this blood falls down into the ventricles. So now all the blood came inside of this ventricle. Now this wall should be closed. Right, Buddha? Now this AV wall, which is tricuspid wall, this should be closed. And after closing of this wall, this ventricle is going into the isovolumetric contraction. And due to this isovolumetric contraction, what is happening, Veda? The pressure into this right ventricle is going to be very high. And this will lead to bulging of this tricuspid wall. This tricuspid wall will bulge out like this into this atria. So again, the atria space will be less and pressure will be increased. So tricuspid bulging lead to again the pressure rises into the right atria and due to this, this C wave is appears. So C wave due to tricuspid bulging. Now after some times, this ventricle gets contracting and now this blood start ejecting out from this ventricle. And again due to this, this, <coughs> this wall will comes down, drops down. So again the pressure of this atria will be dropped down. So this is the waves come into the negative that is the X wave. Then continuously from the vein, the blood is coming into the right atria. So right atria is filling continuously from the venous. So venous filling is continuously occurring and due to this again, the volume will be increased and the pressure will be increased into this right atria. But vein se sara ka sara blood aata jayega continuously aur jaise ye bharne lagega, kya hoega beta pressure into the right atria? Right atria pressure will be increased. So pressure will be increased, again the V wave will be appear, this V wave due to the venous filling, right? And later on, due to this gravity, this blood falls down and due to this falling of this blood, again the pressure of this atria will be less. So this is how this Y wave will be occurs. So I hope now it is clear, beta. now it is clear. So A wave due to atrial contraction, C wave due to bulging of tricuspid valve, X wave due to the ventricular ejection of the blood. V wave due to the venous filling and Y wave due to the ventricular filling. Right, brother? So this is all these waves. Now, this A wave is absent. Now, please tell me. This A wave is absent in which condition? This is in atrial fibrillation. Better yaad rakhna, jab bhi fibrillation hoega, so JVP mein A wave and ECG mein P wave will be absent. Atrial fibrillation ke andar pe JVP mein A wave and ECG mein P wave that will be absent into the fibrillation. So atrial fibrillation A wave will be absent. Right, Buddha? Absent A wave. Now Canon A wave. What is the Canon A wave? Due to this Canon A wave, what is happening, Buddha? This is due to the third degree heart block. And this third degree heart block we also call this complete heart block. There is three type of heart block is there. There is three type of heart block is there. Number one, first degree heart block. Number two, second degree heart block. And number three, third degree heart block. What is happening into the first degree heart block? There is a constant, constant, constant PR prolongation. Constant PR prolongation. Second degree heart block. This is two type. Type Mobis type 1, Mobis type 2. In Mobis type 1, what is happening? 
there is always first of all gradually gradually increasing of pr with drop beat with drop beat always remember type 2 mein beta drop beat hogi dono condition mein type 2 ke andar drop beat hogi that is first degree uh, type 1 and type 2 so second degree ke andar hamesha drop beat hogi and in this the pr will always remain constant pr constant but drop beat is seen drop beat is seen and what is happening into the third degree heart block in third degree heart block what is happening there is no there is no av nodal conduction is going to वेंट्रिकल यानी कोई भी करंट वेंट्रिकल में ए वी नोड के थ्रू से नहीं जाता है तो ए वी नोड अगर कोई भी करंट आगे पास नहीं करेगा सपोज इफ ए वी नोड इज नॉट पासिंग द करंट बियॉन्ड दिस एरिया वट कुड बी हैपन एट्रिया विल स्टार्ट प्रोड्यूसिंग इट्स ओन इलेक्ट्रिसिटी एंड वेंट्रिकल स्टार्ट प्रोड्यूसिंग इट्स ओन इलेक्ट्रिसिटी एंड वट कुड बी हैपन बेटा देर कुड बी द वन पॉसिबिलिटी इज देयर वैन दिस एट्रिया दिस एट्रिया इज कॉन्ट्रेक्टेड and simultaneously this ventricle is also contracted ideally when this atria is contracting then this ventricle should be always into the relaxed condition then only the fling can be occurs right beta jab ye atria contract ho raha hai to is ventricle ko hamesha khulla rehna hai beta tabhi to filling hogi lekin agar suppose mano ye ventricle bhi contract ho gaya aur ye atria bhi contract ho raha hai to will be there any filling or not no there will be no any filling and due to this this high pressure will be generated inside of this atria so in complete heart block this ventricle is contracts at same time when the atria gets contract ideally it should be into the relaxed condition when atria getting contracted so this is called as complete heart block and due to this on the <coughs> jvp you will see the canon a wave that is canon a wave right beta this is canon a wave so in atrial fibrillation there is absent a wave a wave is absent in atrial fibrillation now the next question is yes beta now the next question is going to the next question beta one more quote for for all of you beta for pumping all of you har us cheez mein risk lo jo tumhare sapne sach karne ki aukat rakhte ho beta hamesha aapka jo sapna hai beta वो सपना सच होना चाहिए और उस सपने को सच करने के लिए अगर आपको जीवन में कोई रिस्क भी लेना पड़े ना तो बेटा आप बिल्कुल लो तो आपको सपने को सच करना है और यह सपना आपका खुद का है आपने वो सपना देखा है जीवन में रिस्क को लेना है और उसको करके दिखाना है ये 30 जुलाई अपनी है इस तीस जुलाई को अपन पास होकर रहेंगे अपने को कोई भी नहीं रोक सकता है बेटा इस तीस जुलाई को पास होने से राइट सो ऑल ऑफ यू गाइज प्लीज Fast on your seat belt. Thirtieth of July, just right around the corner, and we are going to pass on this thirtieth of July, right, my dear friends? So, how much is my risk? Lo, jo tumare sapne sach karne ki okaat rakhte ho, right, brother? Yes. So we are going to be pass. Takes every time risk on those things which you are going to be fulfill your dreams. So if your dreams you are going to be fulfilled. take the risk for fulfilling of your dreams so beta we are going to pass on this 30th of july nobody can stop us nobody can <coughs> make us this disheartened condition right beta we are going to pass at any cost on this 30th of july and everybody with us we all are with you god is with us and we have prepared a lot from past several months and definitely beta you are going to be pass on this 30th of july yes my dear friends okay now the next in which phase of cardiac cycle the second heart sound appears normally now the answer of this question in which phase of cardiac cycle second heart sound appears normally yes beta yes
in which phase of cardiac cycle second heart sound appears normally this is a tricky question my dear friends this is a tricky question this is little bit tricky please answer carefully everybody who are saying sir this is b proto diastol ah sorry everybody is saying sir this is b isovolumetric relaxation no my dear friends the answer of this question is c answer of this question is c the best answer for second heart sound is proto diastol but if proto diastol is not giving in the option then the right answer of this question is isovolumetric relaxation right beta so let's talk about of this this is proto diastole what is happening suppose this is the first heart sound right beta so now this is s1 this is the s1 now what is happening beta this is s1 this is s2 and s1 s1 s2 s1 right this is how the heart sound is appears always remember beta i am talking about when this second heart sound comes so this second heart sound comes suppose this is your heart right beta this is your heart now first heart sound comes at the time of this av valve closer so whenever this av valve will close first heart sound will come and whenever this semi lunar valve respectively pulmonary or aortic semi lunar valve will be closed so second heart sound will be come right beta the second heart sound will be come now what is the cardiac phases the cardiac phase is first of all the blood will comes down and this valve will be open right then after this this ventricle will start contracting this ventricle will start contracting and due to this contraction this valve will be closed this valve will be closed so during isovolumetric contraction the first heart sound is appears that is a question of the 20th of january 2023 fmg exam so first heart sound is appearing when beta first heart sound is occurring during the isovolumetric contraction now after that what is happening this blood gets out immediately due to the high pressure this blood gets out and this will give you the ejection click what will give you this this will give you the ejection click right so the next sound that is comes that is the ejection click so at this level what you will feel this is the ejection click this is ejection click what is happening after this after this this heart sound this heart blood is getting out from both the ventricles now what happens beta after getting out of all of this blood now this ventricle is now empty both ventricles is now empty and now this ventricle is going into the relax condition and going into the relax condition just before the uh, relaxation just before the relaxation what we use the word we use the word proto diastole so this stage when the proto diastole proto means just before the diastole so just before the diastole this valve will be closed and the second heart sound will be appear and then the isovolumetric relaxation is starts okay so the right answer of this question is proto diastole proto diastole means just before the diastole so this sound come basically at the proto diastole followed by isovolumetric relaxation isovolumetric relaxation if proto diastole is not given in the option then the second heart sound is isovolumetric relaxation
right beta then after sometimes what happens then sometimes once this thing is happened what is happening this is one sound is comes over here and this is called as opening snap opening snap a very dull sound is comes why this sound is coming because immediately the vent atrial filling is occurs so atrial blood will drop down into the ventricles so due to this whenever this valve will be open so this is called as opening snap so this will called as opening snap right beta after this what is happening if there is any pathology then the one heart sound comes over here and the second heart sound comes over here and this is called as s3 and this is called as s4 and this s3 is coming when this is the first one third one third rapid passive ventricular filling s3 is due to first one third rapid passive ventricular filling and s4 is comes when beta there is the one third second one third rapid and active this is active ventricular filling and in between this in between this what is happening beta in between this this phase this phase is called as diastasis what we call this diastasis so diastasis means one third ventricular filling but this is passive and slow passive and slow so this is your diastasis i hope now it is clear beta this is low frequency sound yes my dear friends this is s3 s4 so if you will remember this diagram easily beta this s1 first of all then after s1 this is the ejection click then the s2 s2 comes at the level of proto diastole followed by isovolumetric relaxation yes beta this is isovolumetric contraction then the opening snap then s3 sound will appear this s3 sound will appear due to this first one third rapid passive ventricular filling then the diastasis will come then the s4 one third rapid active ventricular filling and then the again the next heart sound will be come so this cycle is continuously going on and going on right beta continuously going on and going on okay so this is how you should easily answer of this question if you know the cardiac cycle very well yes beta so this is right answer of this question is proto diastole right coming to the next question what is the least function of cholecystokinin in gi yes my dear friends please answer of this question what is the least function of cck in gastrointestinal gi systems yes please answer question number 17 what is the least function of cholecystokinin in gi yes what is the least function of cholecystokinin in gi answer should be the least function of cholecystokinin yes my dear friends please start answering for question number 17 yes question number 17 beta question number 17 what is the right answer how it could be a beta you are saying it's a decrease the gastric motility beta cholecystokinin 
it never increase the gastric motility my dear friends gastric motility is increased via gastrin gastrin motility is decreased gastric emptying is decreased with the help of cholecystokinin and secretin so secretin or cholecystokinin kya karega gi motility ko kam karega gi emptying ko decrease karega but gastrin kya karega gastric motility is always increased so please answer for this question no none of you answer correctly till now none of you answer correctly till now beta okay so see beta in this question what is the least function of cholecystokinin cholecystokinin it will on always increase gastric motility there are three functions it will increase gastric motility okay see over here cck functions it secretes from the i cells of duodenum i cells and there is three functions of cck first increase sorry it will decrease gastric motility it will decrease gastric motility number 2 it will increase gall bladder motility it will increase gall bladder motility and it will increase pancreatic pancreatic digestive enzymes secretion increase pancreatic digestive enzyme secretion right brother so this is the three function of cholecystokinin right so now now what is the answer of this question first of all let's see decrease gastric motility no it cannot be happen with this cholecystokinin yes beta decrease gall bladder motility no it will increase the gastric mot uh, it will increase the gall bladder motility wait on beta first of all decrease the gastric motility decrease the gastric motility cholecystokinin decrease the gastric motility yes it decrease beta it decrease gastric motility is this true decrease gall bladder motility decrease gall bladder motility no beta it is increase the gall bladder motility it is increases the gall bladder motility number 3 increase pancreatic bicarbonate secretion but there is actually this is the wrong option is given in this question actually it should be the increase gall bladder motility it should be increase gall bladder motility right this is the wrong question so this is now it will become the true so increase gall bladder motility all of you are right because the option is given in this questions are wrong yes beta definitely all of you are right now okay so gall bladder motility will be increase decrease gastric motility and increase pancreatic digestive enzyme secretion this is now the right options now you can see what is the except of this cholecystokinin or what is the least function it will decrease the gastric motility true increase the gall bladder motility true increase pancreatic digestive enzyme secretion true it will increase pancreatic bicarbonate secretion this is false so this is not the function of this cholecystokinin this is not the function of this cholecystokinin then what who will increase this pancreatic bicarbonate secretion beta this pancreatic bicarbonate secretion is increased via secretin secretin enzyme and this secretin enzyme is released via s cells this is released via s cell and there are two function of the secretin enzyme number 1 increase the pancreatic bicarbonate secretion and number 2 again it will decrease the gastric emptying this will decrease the gastric emptying so now you can see now you can see this is the right question is that what is the least function of cholecystokinin so answer should be increase pancreatic bicarbonate secretion pancreatic bicarbonate secretion is function of this 
secretin. This is not the function of CCK, right? CCK is three function only: decrease gastric motility, increase gallbladder motility, <coughs> and increase pancreatic digestive enzyme secretion. Right, brother? So answer of this question should be C. Yes, yes, my dear friend. This is bonus for you. Yes, okay. And as we all know, beginning is always hard. But beta, once you start running, nobody can stop you. Okay? जब आप लोगों ने तैयारी शुरू करी थी, when you have started for your preparation, the beginning was typically hard. Continue class में बैठना beta, morning to evening, it's not so easy. But you did it. And once you start running, now nobody can stop you guys. Right? So 30th of July will be ours. We are going to pass on this 30th of July. Right, beta? So always stay positive right beta stay positive coming to the next question what is the most likely substance in arrow marked area during gi peristalsis what is the most likely substance in arrow marked area during gi peristalsis Yes, beta. ACH, serotonin, nitric oxide, substance P. <clears throat> yes, beta. What is the answer of this question? Yes, beta. What is the answer of this question? Most likely substance, beta. Yes, many of you are right. Many of you are right, beta. The answer of this question is right. Answer of this question is nitric oxide. Okay. So answer of this question is nitric oxide. This is C. Can you see, beta? Can you see over here? At this area, this is the arrow marked structure. Okay, so what is happening at this area? This is actually going into the vasodilation. This is dilation is occurring. So dilation of the intestine is occurring so that bolus can move ahead. It is forwarding moving due to the dilation of this part. And what is happening to the back side? To the back side, this is the contraction is occurring. So this contraction is occurring and this side. This is actually dilation is occurring so that bolus can move ahead and this type of condition or this type of motility we called as peristalsis. Now the question is that this contraction is occurring. Why this contraction is occurring due to the two substance number one ACH number two substance P that is substance P right brother and also it can be occur with the help of serotonin serotonin right beta but this dilation this dilation of the lumen is occurs due to the two neurotransmitter vip and no vip stands for vasoactive intestinal polypeptide and no is for nitric oxide so nitric oxide and vip helps to dilate this lumen and acetylcholine substance p serotonin they helps to contraction of this backside area of this lumen so that this bolus can be pushed forward and this type of motility is called as peristalsis, right, brother? So now you can easily answer. Now you can easily answer this ACH, serotonin, substance P. They all are doing what? Contraction. But where is the arrow is marked? This is in the dilation. And dilation is done via nitric oxide. Okay. So I hope now it is clear. Now <clears throat> the next question is. What will be the effect on the flow if a blood vessel radius and length increase by the two times? Answer for this question now. Yes, Beda. What will be the effect on flow if a blood vessel and length increase by the two times?
मैनी ऑफ यू आर आंसरिंग डी मैनी ऑफ यू आर आंसरिंग डी बेटा बेटा दिस इज द लिटिल बिट ट्रिकी क्वेश्चन यू हैव टू गो थ्रू द लैंग्वेज ऑफ दिस क्वेश्चन बेटा द राइट आंसर ऑफ दिस क्वेश्चन इज बी द राइट आंसर ऑफ दिस क्वेश्चन इज बी ओके so what will be the effect on flow if a blood vessel radius and length increase by the two times how it could be the eight times now let's see beta this is the poislu hagen equation poislu hagen equation according to poislu hagen equation this we use for the flow of the blood so always remember flow is is equal to radius power 4 upon l this is the short formula which you can easily remember to solve this such type of question flow is is equal to r power 4 upon l now what is happening beta this happening the radius and the length is increased how much time two times so now please put this things into the formula 2 by 2 by 2 and by 2 divided by 2 now please solve the question okay length is also double so you have to answer the length is double and radius is r power 4 so 2 is 2 to multiply 2 multiply 2 multiply 2 divided by 2 so now this is coming 16 upon 2 so how much this is 8 times so that is why the right answer of this question is 8 times right beta suppose if only the examiners give you only the radius is double but length is still same so now if radius is double if radius is double only but length is remain same now how could it could be 2 2 2 and 2 upon 1 so now it is the 16 times now it is the 16 times similarly if he will tell you if radius is tripled so if tripled it means 3 3 3 and 3 and length is still same so it is it means 1 only so it is again 81 times so this is very easy equation beta just by putting on this you can easily solve this such type of question so right answer of this question right answer of this question in <coughs> this c in this picture as you can see beta the vessel this is over here so radius is double and length is double so answer is increased by 8 times increased by 8 times ओके रूल नंबर नाइन सेज वॉक विद एन अनशेकेबल कॉन्फिडेंस इफ यू मेक यू अपियर मोर पावरफुल सो आपका जो कॉन्फिडेंस है बेटा योर कॉन्फिडेंस विल हेल्प यू टू सॉल्व द क्वेश्चन ऑन द थर्टी ऑफ जुलाई सो बी कॉन्फिडेंट एंड बी पावरफुल गाइस बी कॉन्फिडेंट बी पावरफुल स्टे पॉजिटिव राइट बेटा नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज A 54-year-old male comes to the emergency room with complaints of sudden, violent, hyperkinetic, involuntary ipsilateral movement on the right arm and leg. Ipsilateral movement on the right arm and leg. On examination, patient find to have hemibalasmus. So it means it is already clearly mentioned that patient is suffering from the hemibalasmus. And this hemibalasmus, this hemibalasmus is a actually problem of the involuntary motor movements. so identify defect on which area leading to this condition so beta this involuntary motor control is gone and this motor controls is actually regulated via with the help of basal ganglia and this basal ganglia we already know that this basal ganglia there is total five basal ganglia are there basal ganglia so number 1 over here then number 2 is over here this is number 2 then this is number 3 and this is number 4 this is number 5 right beta these are the basal ganglia so let's write down one by one this is your caudate this is putamen this is globus pallidum globus pallidum this is subthalamic nuclei and this is your substantia nigra substantia nigra 
सो काउडेट पुटामैन ग्लोबस पेलेडियम सब थेलेमिक न्यूक्लियाई एंड सबस्टेंशिया नाइका दीज आर द फाइव बेजल गैंगलिया आर दे आई टोल्ड यू बेटा दे काउडेट एंड पुटामैन कंबाइंडली वॉट वी कॉल दूज दैट स्ट्राइटम वॉट वी कॉल दैट स्ट्राइटम सो स्ट्राइटम इज काउडेट प्लस पुटामैन नाउ इफ देर इज एनी प्रॉब्लम इन टू दिस स्ट्राइटम और द काउडेट दिस कंडीशन कॉल्ड एस कोरिया दिस इज कंडीशन कॉल्ड एस कोरिया इफ एनी प्रॉब्लम अकर इन ग्लोबस पेलिडियम दिस इज कॉल्ड एस एथेटोसिस एथेटोसिस राइट बेटा एंड इफ एनी प्रॉब्लम अकर्स इन सब थेलेमिक न्यूक्लियाई द कंडीशन इज लीड टू द हेमी बैलसमस हेमी बैलसमस एंड इफ एनी प्रॉब्लम इन टू द सबस्टेंशियल नाइग्रा द कंडीशन इज कॉल्ड एस पार्किसंस डिजीज Parkinson's disease, right, brother? So these are the basal ganglia. Some of the diseases which you have to remember from caudate or striatum. This is chorea. From globus pallidum, this is athetosis. Subthalamic nuclei is hemibalasmus, and substantia nigra is Parkinson's disease, right, brother? Now, now, as the examiner is already given the things, the diagnosis is hemibalasmus. So hemibalasmus is a problem of this subthalamic nuclei. subthalamic nuclei and which actually which neurotransmitter is secreted via this subthalamic nuclei beta which neurotransmitter subthalamic nuclei secretes the glutamate glutamate so glutamate is secreted via the subthalamic nuclei which neurotransmitter defect in the parkinson disease that is your dopamine dopamine that is your dopamine right beta so hemibalasmus problem of subthalamic nuclei subthalamic nuclei secretes the glutamate neurotransmitter that is the most common stimulatory neurotransmitter for the brain most common stimulatory neurotransmitter for the brain is glutamate most common stimulatory brain neurotransmitter right beta so right answer of this question is subthalamic nuclei now the next is a 3 year old child having difficulty in breathing faint low appetite on echocardiogram abnormal heart sound found shown in the image what is the cause of abnormal sound so what is the right answer of this question can you see what is happening so abnormal heart sound what we call this abnormal heart sound we call this murmur what we call this we call this murmur we call this murmur right beta now there are the different different area for the murmur this is s1 s2 and s1 right s1 s2 s1 so can you see this murmur is accruing from s1 to s1 again so it is continuously this murmur is accruing so there is three type of murmur which we have talked about systolic murmur diastolic murmur and continuous murmur right beta systolic diastolic and continuous murmur this continuous murmur we also called as machinery murmur right so now what is happening this is the continuous or machinery murmur this continuous or machinery murmur is actually seen in the pda this is seen into the pda right beta patent ductus arteriosus now what is the murmur seen in mitral regurgitation anybody in mitral regurgitation mitral regurgitation which type of murmur in mitral regurgitation and vsd in mitral regurgitation and vsd the murmur which we seen that is the systolic murmur the murmur which will see that is the systolic murmur which is also called as holo systolic murmur okay holo systolic murmur then in the aortic regurgitation then aortic regurgitation we will see the diastolic murmur diastolic murmur and which type this is decrescendo type decrescendo type murmur decrescendo diastolic murmur 
सो पी डी ए इज शोज दिस कंटिन्यूस और मशीनरी मरमर दिस इज कंटिन्यूस कंटिन्यूस और मशीनरी मरमर राइट बेटा नाउ प्लीज आइडेंटिफाई नाउ प्लीज आइडेंटिफाई ए बी दिस इज एस वन एस टू एंड एस वन एस टू एस वन एस वन एस टू एस वन एस वन एस टू एस वन Please identify which murmur you will call this A and which murmur you will call this B. This murmur number A and murmur number B. What you will call this murmur number A and what you will call this murmur number B? Please answer. Yes, beta. yes please identify this is actually your this is actually your systolic murmur yes beta because s1 to s2 is systolic and s2 to s1 is diastolic so always remember this is diastolic murmur and this is systolic murmur so point number a is systolic murmur and point number b is systolic and diastolic murmur and if this type of situation is occurs from s1 to continue till again the s1 this is called as continuous murmur this is called as continuous murmur so right answer of this question is d p d a right beta yes everyone you are right this is pan diastolic murmur or pan systolic murmur right beta systolic or diastolic right now the next question a chronic alcoholic person sleeps in night by putting his arm under head in morning he feels tingling sensation numbness pain in this arm identify which is true statement regarding nerve fiber option number a a fiber is less sensitive for pressure than the b fiber b fiber is less sensitive for the pressure than c fiber b fiber is more sensitive for the pain than c fiber and b fiber is less sensitive for pressure than a fiber what should be the answer of this question what should be the answer of this question yes please answer for question number 22 question number 22 please answer beta A fiber is less sensitive for pressure than B fiber. Bida, yes, Ashwarya, you are right, Bida. Yes, Ashwarya, you are right, Bida. yes beta please answer true statement what is a true statement a fiber is less sensitive for pressure than b fiber beta a fiber always remember a fiber for pressure b fiber for hypoxia and c fiber for pain for pain the fast pain is carried by a delta fiber and the slow pain is carried by the c fiber a is for pressure b for hypoxia c for pain in pain the fast pain is carried by the a delta fiber and slow is via the c fiber right beta so now please answer a fiber is less sensitive for pressure than the b fiber no beta it is more sensitive for the pressure than the b fiber right beta so this is wrong 
नेक्स्ट इज बी फाइबर इज लेस सेंसिटिव फॉर द प्रेशर देन द सी फाइबर नो बेटा सी फाइबर इज सेंसिटिव मेनली फॉर द पेन बी फाइबर इज मोर सेंसिटिव बी फाइबर इज मोर सेंसिटिव फॉर पेन देन द सी फाइबर नो बेटा बी फाइबर इज लेस सेंसिटिव फॉर द पेन देन द सी फाइबर एंड द बी फाइबर इज लेस सेंसिटिव फॉर द प्रेशर देन द ए फाइबर नाउ प्लीज आंसर now please answer b fiber is less sensitive for the pressure than a fiber yes this is right answer of this question b fiber is less sensitive for the pressure than the a fiber just why are remembering this table you can easily solve this type of question a is for pressure b for hypoxia c for pain right beta you can remember like this you can remember one more tricks aap agar kisi ko aage ki taraf kisi ko push karenge aap kisi ko push karenge aap kisi ko pressure marenge तो आप जीवन में कहा जाएंगे बेटा आगे सो so, प्रेशर अगर लगाएंगे इफ यूल पुश द प्रेशर टू समी वेयर हिल वी गो ही विल गो फॉरवर्ड ओनली द आगे सो प्रेशर फॉर आगे ए फॉर ए फाइबर देन इफ यू आर फीलिंग द हाइपोक्सिया व्हाट यू विल डू यू विल डू द मोर ब्रीदिंग सो बी फॉर बी फाइबर और ब्रीदिंग यू कैन रिमेंबर लाइक दिस एंड वेन एवर देर विल बी द पेन पेन कब होगा बेटा जब आपको चोट लगेगी सो सी फॉर चोट सी फॉर सी फाइबर so like this mnemonic you can easily remember pressure jab aap kisi ko pressure denge a fiber hypoxia you are starting for the more and more breathing and pain for the chot right beta so now the right answer of this question should be b fiber is less sensitive for the than the a fiber yes beta this is right answer is d now the next question A foreign medical graduate had a trauma in right side of shoulder and neck region during night club night. While examining hospital, he found not to feeling the proprioception, tactile localization, pressure sensation from below area on the same affected side. But he not to feeling the proprioception, tactile localization, pressure sensation from the below area on the same affected side. But he can feel the pain, hot and cold sensation. Which statement is true regarding the spinothalamic tract? Now, please answer for this question. Yes, Vida. What is the right answer of this question? What is the right answer for this question? Now, please answer. <clears throat> what is the right answer for this question yes beta yes everyone is right everyone is right beta everyone is right well done this is number 1 the right answer of this question is c ipsilateral loss of sensation if injury to dorsal column pathway so beta always you have remember in the dorso and antero column pathway this is this is your spinal cord right beta and suppose this is your medulla and this is your brain right cortex now what is happening all the time whenever there this sensory fiber there is two type of fiber so they are coming down and then they going above and then they decussate at the level of medulla and then they goes into the cortex so this is called as spinothalamic tract going from the and starting from the spine going up to the cortex right beta so now we always know that this side of brain is always controls to the opposite side of the body and this side of the brain is controls to the opposite side of the body so now these fibers are coming from downside and now they enters into the spinal cord and then they are going upside but now they should reach up to the opposite side of the brain so they should cross over at the some place so these columns they are called as dorsal column pathways and they dorsal column pathways they decussate at the level of medulla right beta now the another type of fibers the another type of fibers they actually again also comes from here 
but they decussate at the level of spinal cord and then they reaches upside up to the medulla and they already decussate so they are never decussate at the level of medulla and then they reach up to directly to the cortex right beta? so number one fiber dorsal column and number two they are called as entero entero lateral pathway entero lateral pathway now the question is asking suppose if this fiber is lost suppose if this fiber is lost from here so sensation is going on the same side of the body or the opposite side of the body of this dorsal column dorsal column sensation will be lost on the same side of the body right because they are decussating at the level of medulla so below the medulla if dorsal column is injured the loss of the body sensation will be on the same side so called as ipsilateral loss of dorsal column pathway now what about the anterolateral pathway if this anterolateral pathway is damaged of this side this side anterolateral pathway is damaged then what is happening beta the damage is happening to the opposite side of the body so this is called as contralateral loss of anterolateral pathway at injury of the below level of the medulla right beta so now let's see the answer of ipsilateral sensation of injury to anterolateral pathway no this is contralateral contralateral loss of sensation of dorsal column pathway no ipsilateral loss of sensation to injury to the dorsal column pathway yes ipsilateral and contralateral loss of sensation of injury in anterolateral pathway no beta this is again the wrong answer so right answer of this question is ipsilateral loss of sensation of injury to the dorsal column pathway right so right answer of this question is c okay yes yes prateek <laughs> remember this yes beta very good very good beta these sensations now the next question is a Mahatma Gandhi Narega labor <clears throat> Mahatma Gandhi Narega labor this while working in hot summer got faint and unconsciousness brought to the hospital which of the least condition can be seen in this patient so in Narega patient means Narega means National Rural Employment Guarantee Act okay beta National Rural Employment Guarantee Act, Narega ke andar jo log kaam karte hain. So this person is got fanned into the hot summer. What is the clue point? That is the hot summer. So now what could be the condition which we can see in this patient and the condition which we will not see in this patient and press. Absolutely you are right, beta. Absolutely you are right. Yes, Prathvi, I am good, beta. I am good. How are you? So the least condition in this patient, beta, always remember you never see the sweating then this is a condition for the hyperthermia because in the hot summer he is working and hyperthermia if severe hyperthermia will occur severe hyperthermia will be occur there will be sweating will be always absent but what could you will see you will see the high grade fever tachycardia and tachypnea tachypnea means increased rate of respiration what is the <clears throat> hyperpnea 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 means increase depth of respiration tachypnea hyperpnea increase rate or depth of the respiration so you will see in this patient this high grade fever tachycardia tachypnea but you will not see the sweating in this patient if sweating will be occur the temperature will be dropped down but temperature is not dropping down lead to the hyperthermia condition so sweating will be absent in this condition right beta so now the last question of this today's session which of the following describe the bohr effect yes beta which of the following describe the bohr effect yes beta Which of the following describe the Bohr effect? Yes, my dear friends. What is the Bohr effect?
यस बेटा वाट इज द बोहर इफेक्ट बेटा बोहर इफेक्ट इज एक्चुअली द राइट आंसर ऑफ दिस क्वेश्चन इज दिस प्रमोट्स द ओ टू रिलीज विद बाइंडिंग ऑफ कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड टू द हिमोग्लोबिन आई टोल्ड यू बेटा देर इज थ्री थिंग्स नंबर वन बोहर इफेक्ट देन नंबर टू इज हेल्डन इफेक्ट एंड नंबर थ्री इज हेमबर्ग ऑफ फिनोमिना I told you whenever the oxygen is carries up to the level of tissue at the tissue level there is a lot of carbon dioxide is present just by seeing this hemoglobin more and more carbon dioxide this will immediately dissociate this oxygen and this will bind with the carbon dioxide to maine aapko bataya tha beta hemoglobin ko kya pasand aata hai jahan pe jo cheez zyada dikhti hai wo usko le leta hai right at the level of tissue what is happening this hemoglobin will see there is lot of co2 is present so that is why this hemoglobin will immediately dissociate all this oxygen and immediately will bind with the carbon dioxide and this effect is called as bohr effect so promotes o2 release with binding of co2 to to hemoglobin now when this blood reaches up to the level of alveoli at the lungs now this blood is filled up with the carbon dioxide but now in the alveoli what is there more there is lot of oxygen is there now again this hemoglobin will see that there is lot of oxygen so will immediately release this co2 from here and it will immediately bind with this oxygen so this effect is called as helden effect so this helden effect is promote co2 release with binding of oxygen to hemoglobin then this chloride shift this chloride shift is also called as hamburger phenomena what is happening beta this hco3 is actually the extraction of the co2 so this bicarbonate should be wash out through the kidney and how it could be wash out when this will get out from the cell so cell will excrete out this bicarbonate and as this is the negative ion one negative ion is going out so another negative ion should come inside of the cell so outside of the cell which is the most abundant extracellular anion that is the chlorine so chlorine will enter and bicarbonate gets out so this is called as chloride shift seen with bicarbonate exchanger in rbc and this phenomena is called as hamburger phenomena hamburger phenomena and this is called as helden effect helden effect right beta one more question double bohr effect is seen in where is the double bohr effect you can see double bohr effect will see in the placenta the blood <coughs> double bore effect you will see in the placenta right beta so this is the bore effect answer of this question should be b right beta so this is all from this session beta one last quote for all of you before the exam beta always remember 1% is luck 1% is talent and 98% never give never give up attitude is the 100% success formula so for succeeding 100% what you have to do you should not give up you should not give up till the 30th of july aap kisi se dar nahi sakte aap kisi se ruk nahi sakte beta aap ye bilkul soch ke padhna nahi chhod sakte ki sir mere ko kuch bhi yaad nahi hai you remember everything everything is inside of your mind and this is the 30th of july बेटा इस थर्टियथ ऑफ जुलाई को अपने को झंडा फहराना है अपने को उस बुलंदियों को शिखर को छूना है उस पहाड़ की चोटी के ऊपर खड़े होना है और जोर से चिल्लाना है नाउ आई एम ए डॉक्टर नाउ आई एम ए डॉक्टर यस बेटा सो वन परसेंट लाक वन परसेंट टैलेंट एंड नाइनटी एट परसेंट नेवर गिव अप कुछ दिनों की बात है बेटा उस पहाड़ के ऊपर खड़े होके आप जोर से कहोगे लोगों को कि नाउ आई एम ए डॉक्टर फॉर द लाइफ टाइम yes beta so this is the 100% success formula this is all from today's session my best wishes to all of you for this upcoming fmg july 23 exam you all are going to pass this exam beta i'll pray to the god entire miss team is standing behind of you all we are faculties are praying for you beta continuously so keep standing keep study keep positive and always try to remember your loved ones in this time and try to focus on the study as well and don't give up right beta you are going to be pass you are going to be pass and you are definitely going to be pass on this 30th of july so this is all from today's session
थैंक यू वेरी मच आई एम डॉक्टर अरुण स्वामी योर फिजियोलॉजी फैकल्टी फ्रॉम टीम मिस्ट थैंक यू बेटा